the Sultan of Rum was ready for action on the opposite side of the river. The Sultan expected his 200 thousand strong army to quickly send us fleeing. Behind us, we could hear the nobles asking where was the warrior Bohemian, because he hadn't been seen for a little while. The Norman Lord tried to return to us when his horsemen were hit by the archers. Quintessential Paladin 2-page roleplay. We're following the First Crusade, fighting at the Battle of Dori Laeum. Later in that afternoon, we continue with our action. The gameplay was recorded and finished. I broke the action into three episodes, of which this is the middle part. Now, Bohemian's forces, they were exhausted. The commander retreated to our side of the river. There, they were assembling all their wagons together, and they were resting their mounts behind them when the Turk conscripts decided to cross the river. The basic tactics of the day would be their horsemen will primarily attack my peasant militia, and our horsemen will primarily attack the Turkish peasant militia. Whoever defeats the other side's militia first will then turn on the center, and the battle will be won. Robert Williamson, he headed out from behind us and moved up along the river to find Bohemian. There, his mounted forces pinched the Turk between him and Bohemian's barricades. Bohemian ordered his knights to mount up and charge, and the Turk were forced back into the river as all the lords pursued. If they had routed and then came to our aid, this battle might have ended here. But that would have left many Turks battle ready for another advance that afternoon or the next day. So we are at... Going back to this, we have six knights that we need to defeat. And I'm going to try to take it all the way to zero. And let's uh, give me a die roll here. And I will do I will do kingly deliberation. Since Robert has stepped away, there's more emphasis that they will need myself and some of the core of the veterans of the Peregrini Christi. These are the people that have survived since the very beginning to come back and help defend the command structure. And I'm basically telling the image, no. We need to stay in the field and rally these people. We need to hold. So here's my die on kingly deliberations. It's a six. I consult. And with an NPC to foster faith, this is becoming an eight. We've got uh, six knights to defeat, although I can overwhelm them now with this eight, uh, fostering faith and to clear the battle win. But I'd love to bring that to zero. So let me roll again on uh, kingly deliberations and see what the result of that. A three. Gain a critical deed to foster fate, yet lose plot armor. I think we decided that uh, that would be one that I don't particularly want to take care of. And I'm going to go back to Pious Quest after that. And here comes a roll of a three. Defeat a die six fell ones to foster faith. Okay. Go to an eight. And I'm going to defeat a die six fell ones. How many am I going to defeat? Come back to here. D6. Four fell ones, and here comes, if it was one or two, I might take a five result or four result as just eliminate a fell one to win and end this interlude. But if I roll something where I still have four fell ones, I'm probably going to use it as to add a dark knight. Five, like here. I'm going to take this five, I'm going to treat it as six, so I got four plus a knight. Attacking again, a six. I can defeat all the fell ones or that one knight. I will defeat all the fell ones. I have one knight I need to defeat. Two dice, a seven. These are good rolls. Good rolls. Now, the statistically, I'm going to get some good rolls. But if I ever get some more of these uh, twos and threes, uh, even double fours like I had before, I'm going to start to see that I'm going to lose my test of prowess and be forced onto other tables. That may or may not happen. Now, I've defeated those fell ones and I've fostered my faith. Coming back over here, I roll a single die on Pious Quest. I got a four. Defeat a Dark Knight. That's what we're talking about. Here comes my defeating of a Dark Knight. And we roll on Test of Prowess. Two dice. It is a five. I treat the five as a six here on out. So that means I have two Dark Knights to defeat. Here comes my roll. A five again. Treats as a six. That's one of them down. Rolling again. A six. Here roll. It's going to be a defeat of the Dark Knight. Now, I'm adding one to my roll because I'm destined. If I ever lose that destined status and can't get it back, a lot of the ballistics of the game, the mechanics of the game, will change radically. I was tangled in the reins of a stallion trying to grip the wrist of the man punching me. I felt my hair catch fire, and I knew that was one of my soldiers helping me and the cause. Close to death, these were our agreed-upon tactics. If my fate, I was ready. The pilgrim rammed the flaming wickered into the eyes of the horse. The creature rose and jettisoned the rider. The fallen Turk was stunned and lucky to be such. I only caught a glimpse of the swarm piling upon the night. I was too busy extinguishing my hair. The enemy yelped, then screamed, then gurgled blood. 
several men were nailing stakes through his chest plate. One man was pierced deeply by two arrows. Still, he hammered with ecstasy on his face to meet his maker having sent another soul before him. The horse too was subdued, not taken as a prize, but instead set further ablaze. Saddle blanket, tail, and mane, it bolted through many of the Peregrini Christi before stumbling and drowning in the river. I have defeated another Dark Knight. Now Robert Williamson, he has advanced, and at this point in the battle, the enemy, the Turks, have advanced their reserves, and you hear them uh, coming forward to the sounds of drums and uh, horns. It's almost that uh, moment in the Lord of the Rings where the holy font show up. Now the turban warriors approach the river and they're discharging volley upon volley of arrows and darts, but they can't do this against us because my tactic of intermingling with the Turkish nobles on horseback is meaning that they have to limit their arrows and darts to only the people that they can immediately uh, sight, a line of sight. They're not allowed to just volley and blanket us. As we attack within the body of the High Lords, those are the 1,200 horse Turk cavalry that we're most worried about. The Heltists decide to move and instead direct most of their attacks against the Normans. Because even if the Normans are charging into the Turkish light mercenaries and peasantry, the Heltists and uh, archers don't care if they kill some of their own. Which is also to our benefit as well. Even though we're going to lose some Norman knights, some very famous men will die in this battle. We are going to have the fact that they're killing some of their own people and that tends to affect morale. Now the sound of the enemy yelling, challenges, this is absolutely fearsome, but the Peregrini Christi, the core element, is emboldened for this attack. There's just a hatred of the Muslims by this point amongst the Christian pilgrims. Though male protected, our riders, many of the horses become utterly useless getting hit by stones and light uh, javelins and being hit by arrows. Plus, the sun now is overhead, and it is just intolerable. And many of the finest Clydesdales that we have are becoming a victim of the heat. Just as Alexander lost his first horse in Hungary, the Normans soon learned that northern beasts with full barding were good for only a couple of charges in this heat of the summer. Let's go back to our game here. Pious quest, rolling a D6, a 2. I will defeat a die six fell ones, lose destined status or add a scourge. Well, we could either mulligan that or I could add the scourge. I think I can defeat a scourge. So how about if I get a die six fell ones, one. The scourge of battle is there only one? The light in fear. Walter David the Houndsman sent his Danes tearing at the throats of two prone soldiers. Their horse had been slashed open by Alexander's scythe. Hmm, horse. An oddly shaped one at that. Carried two riders. Turkopole style, one was wrangling and steering as the other, a moment before, was hurling darts. Two men sharing the beast. The missileer may have been ferried up and back as he ran out of ammo. Oh, the animal. We all agreed, not a horse, as we watched the dogs brutalize. Someone suggested it was a southern reindeer, yet no horns. Could be an elongated bear. Our short period of reflection ended as we found new enemies trying to kill us back. So one fell one and one scourge. Now the scourge would be an extra action. It's not going to generate fostering faith and it's not going to generate dark knight. And I can defeat it with tests of prowess. I could also do it with the others, but I'm just not as good with the dice rolls. Righteous rewards, I roll two dice as a justice man, but take the lower. And here I only roll one die. Tests of prowess, two dice, a five. Once again, I'm going to use that 5 to convert it to a 6. I got, well, I, I could just defeat the Fell One. I got a Fell One and I got a Scourge. Nope, I'm going to add a Fell One. I'm going to add a Dark Knight. I'm going to add a Scourge. And by defeating all three, I'm still treating 5s as 6s. Go with the statistics. 7. Well, there goes my Scourge. I now got a Fell One and a Dark Knight. A 5. 5, I'm treating now as 6s. There goes that Dark Knight. All I got left is a Fell One, 2 dice. Best roll of a six, down goes the fell one. I'm still at five Dark Knights to defeat. Back to Kingly Deliberations. And I rolled a one, defeated die six fell ones. Defeat, one fell one. Well, that's almost a gimme. Defeating one fell one, how are we gonna do that? Test of prowess, here comes the two dice roll. I rolled a five, in this case I don't need to uh, take the modifier that adds a dark knife here. I can just defeat one fell knight on a five and that I'll do so. Back to my refs page, kingly deliberations, some guy must have snuck in the camp. Five, circumvent a scourge to foster fate, yet lose destined status. If I lost destined status here, 
you'd see a lot more difficult play. I'm not really, until I get past the Siege of Antioch, I'm probably not interested in losing my destined status. How about if I use a mulligan here? Here comes a die roll. Four, gain a critical insight to foster fate, yet chain class to air. I don't really care for that one either. That one's an ugly one. Air status would mean at this point, I would either have to decide to declare victory of having my six overwhelm the four in faith and let the whole thing finish out pro forma where knights and men fight until maiming and brutaling and I'm sort of back in the command tent watching. I don't really want to take that role at the moment. So I'm going to use another mulligan and here comes a die roll. Kingly deliberations at two. Defeat a dark knight. A better role indeed. So I am over here on my Tessa Prowess, two dice, and I rolled a six. Dark Knight goes down. After all that indecision of whether or not I should become an heir status, maybe as Alexander, as a nephew of Bohemond, gets a courier who comes and says that his uncle wants him to move part of the forces to go support him, because Bohemond is not having a good time as well against the majority of these militia. I received a noble page tugging at my elbow. I nearly shattered his nose. Bohemond's division was misplaced, an odd use of the word. Our division was to fall back and support the command staff. The consensus was we'd be safer further downstream. The man showed me some parchment with circles and lines. I assumed an illustration of the next phase of tactics, as if this were some game of chess. We'd be closer to the Normans. Was he messenger from Bohemond or our command tents? The truth, I was told later, was that many of the Norman knights were uneasy leaving their baggage and ladies so far out of view. A shift down the river was pure folly. We disengaged now and would lose thousands to missile fire. Only reason the Turk held back was because some of their finest were engaged, trapped within our block. More Turk were rushing across the river, a tiring enterprise, trying to relieve their exhausted nobles. These reinforcements were crowding the retreat of their own Seljuk knights. Peter Bartholomew, my brother, asked the same question twice, once to Alexander and then to me. What should we do? I heard you the first time. I sent my brother Bart back with the courier to the command tent. Clarify the dispatch. Find out who gives this order. I would not see him again for the rest of the battle. All maneuvers seemed to be taken out of my hands as the Turk manhandled us to and fro through the matted grass next to the river. Now the battle has moved back and forth across the river. Uh, most of the uh, horses by now are exhausted, and many of the knights have dismounted or send their horses back with pages to be wetted down. Some of the horses even break loose of retainers and race back wildly toward my group, the Pleb Pauperum. We are forced to waste energy determining whether or not we're facing friends or foes on these new horses coming in. The riderless mounts also cross the command camp of Bishop Adamar, and at this point he believes that the Normans, the second division of this battle, has been routed. And he orders his mercenaries to start packing up the baggage and escorting the noble ladies and their daughters, damsels, away from the battlefield. Image to his credit. He actually, at this point in the battle, he cries out, no, 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 we need to force the battle. If we lost the knights of the Normans, you know, he'll accept that like the other commanders. If we have lost the Norman knights, then we must all commit all our reserves, all these mercenaries that we held back with our retainers. Anyone who can pick up a weapon now needs to join the Peregrini Christi and fight. Because he knows if we can defeat the Turkish nobles, even if we lost our own nobles, we're going to have a good stalemate, if not a win. Von Leninger leads a force of foot troops out, but then he immediately changes his mind, unfortunately, and goes to find Bohemond to find out if he actually has lost the battle or not. Kingly deliberations. Here comes a die roll. These are probably some of the hardest to make and roll. Maybe I'll stay off a of pious quest just to add some uh, difficulty here. Defeat a D6 fell ones. D6 fell ones. One fell one. Well, at this point, you see me play this enough that one fell one. Huh. How did I do that? With a three? Becomes a four? No, that's a two that becomes a one. Three, I'm jolted. I'm going to lose mighty wise or careful. And I had a fell one. There are now two fell ones. I got lazy and complacent. I will lose my fours. Now, in this case, I'm losing my four before I've got the modifier. If I roll a four again, I treat it as another three. Two dice, test of prowess, I get to defeat two fell ones, and there it is. I rolled a four, so now I treat it as a second three. I am jolted. 
I would lose one, either mighty wise and careful. I would lose wise and careful at this point, plus add a fell one. No, I will use a mulligan and stop that. Two dice, a five. Now a five can defeat one fell one. I have only two to defeat, or I can treat it as the modifier, but that adds a dark knight. I will add the dark knight. I have a dark knight, two fell ones, treating fives as sixes, but treating fours as three. Two dice, I've used a mulligan, a five. Back to back fives means I have defeated the dark, uh, the two fell ones. I have a dark knight. Is that a better way to do it? Should I do the dark knight first? Hmm. Yeah, I should do the dark knight first. I have two fell ones. I've used one mulligan, and here comes my next die roll. And I rolled a six. Didn't matter. Even though that pondering about whether or not I should take it one way or the other, it just fell out the way it did. I have defeated the two fell ones. I've defeated the dark knight. Even though I lost my careful status, I also used a mulligan. Men wage war because, in truth, it can be quite fun. There's an exhilaration in slaughter. I felt it. I could see Alex certainly enjoyed the action without questioning the morality. I used the weapon of one man to kill the footman next to him. I was quite proud of myself. There was no end to the parade of men coming to die. The field had apples to pluck and grass to be mowed. I did not doubt the courage nor skill in arms of these Turk. I just think they had more in life to live for. All gone. They were dying as I still mocked them. I smiled and angered one sultanic captain who had been stripped of his helmet. He looked familiar. Did I butcher your brother at Sevatot? I would kill this man and two others, maybe his squires or younger siblings. Perhaps they all look alike with insides exposed. That was somewhat costly, but not terribly so. Now there are five knights left. Technically, I could cancel the five with my five and end it here. But if I do that, I would continue on in my video play here with no mulligans. I could probably rebuild it, but all it would take is just a few bad dice rolls at the start of next episode. Nope, I'm going to continue. Am I off a of pious quest altogether? I said I would be. Here comes single die and kingly deliberations at two. Defeat a dark knight. Great time for that. Back to my character here. Test of prowess. I can always use my plot armor as well to change into a holy courtly uh, knight or automatically defeat a scourge, critical insight, or critical deed, or ignore a slain result if I should have some sort of cascade to ruin here. Two dice looking to defeat a dark knight. Six. Down goes Frazier. I found myself wistful gazing at Leroy, the majesty of Alexander de Nochon. Our hero sliced off the lower hind legs of a horse as the rider tried to wheel the mount to escape. Only God bestows a weapon that sharp and that lethal. He was the very model of an angel sent to fell demons. Continual drumming, the pounding of stakes in the chest plates. The pilgrims, those that survive, would tell stories around the hearth on cold nights. Eastern devils, vampires stapled to the good earth. We are at four here. We're getting close. We have five kingly deliberations. Four. Gain a critical insight to foster fate, yet change class to air. Hmm, I'm close. But that still frightens me. I would gain a critical insight to foster faith, but change to air. Yes. Here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to gain the fostering faith. I will need to get a critical insight, and I change my class to air. Now I'm over at this table here, air. Air rolls one die on every table. If I get a critical insight, I can get that unrighteous rewards with a six or a five, and I still got my destined status. I will try one die here and see if I have to use a mulligan or not. And a four, a four is going to, oh, I should add one for my destined status. I don't have that in the modifier here. So it's a five, I got a muse. If it happens again, I get another three, but I only need the one critical inside and I got it on a roll of a five, four plus one for destined status to justice. So for a moment, I'm an heir. In a moment, I'm conspiring with Bishop Adamar. And I will immediately use my plot armor, so that in case I lose it, it doesn't matter. And I will change my class back to justice. I was all but dragged back to the command pavilion. Alex assured me he'd keep the packs on task. A Muslim author, Al Harawai, described Dori Leyum as a place of medicinal hot springs on the frontier, on the end of Christian faith. I had swallowed some of the river water. A hundred bruises and cuts on me were drying. Maybe the springs were magical. You've proved your courage seven times over.
Bishop Adamar did not want me on the field. You've proved your courage seven times over. Robert Williamson would agree if he was here. You're too highly valued as a lord. What if you were captured? The ransom demand would be impossible. Was he joking? Certainly Peter Bartholomew has not that coin. No, the bishop shunned all humor. Stay back here before you lose a limb. I gulped from a pitcher of noble water. Seemed not as soothing. Was Adamar speaking to me as practice of what he'd say to Robert? That princeling was another man who enjoyed the sport of war. Robert Williamson was a high lord, yet marred by being the grandson of an unmarried duke. His father was illegitimate even as William conquered England. Robert formed an army for our crusade. He mortgaged his duchy in France to his younger brother to raise the sum of 10,000 marks. That brother had already died of natural causes. Could take yet more battle to decide who owned his lands back in France. Now, here Robert Williamson fought, just like me. We both had claims to fortune, but only claims. Bishop Adamar was right that no one could pay my ransom, nor should anyone. I stoically returned to the battle lines. Walter the Houndsman greeted me. Returns one mighty Mercian, sole survivor of the Grandsires, rages now this red beard. Let's stop right here, right as the misery befalls. More later.